For myself, I could not imagine going back to analog workflows. There are so many touch points. And in your point of view, what are what is in reality the most essential steps that you considered in the office? Uh, Intooral scanning. I think that's, that's the door opener. That's the door opener. Of course, a 3D radiograph, CBCT, things of that nature. And then now, really, with overlapping uh, a scan of the face or a 2D photo, um, is really changing how we can view our patient. Ever wondered if digital dentistry is making us, in fact, better clinicians? The way I see it, it changed everything for better. The way we plan and execute our cases to how we communicate with our patients and our peers in a each time more, more multidisciplinary approach in our practice. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Kim Schlem from the United States. She's a passionate advocate about digital technologies, and she's been roaming the world teaching clinicians and helping them achieve precision and efficiency without losing what makes our work truly special, the human factor, right? That's right. <laughs> Dr. Schlem, thank you for joining us on Straubman Pro Talk Clinical. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind invitation. First things first. Speaking of digital workflows, and I said you were an ambassador, I'm curious, in your perception, digital workflows are a trend or a real shift in modern implantology? It's a great question because there's so many new technologies that come out, and it's easy to think that these things are fads, and maybe I'll try this and try that. But for myself, I could not imagine going back to analog workflows. Uh, I would say that it's, uh, it's changed not just the experience for myself, for my fellow team members, but my patients. So uh, in terms of is it going to change, I think it's going to keep becoming more and more digital with the predictability of our results and just the efficiency we can have. And again, truly communicate with our partners in a multidisciplinary way, as well as our patients. If you could pick one or all of the above, which one do you think it makes the highest impact, the efficiency, the, the accuracy, or even patients with gag reflex, for example, yes, that yes. the patient experience matter equally as the treatment? Absolutely. I think I'm torn. I have two. So I <laughs> argue that I, the two are very important for me. But the intraoral scanning mm. aspect, I think at this point in dentistry, we can offer something better than how we used to do it. And I think that intraoral scanning, um, again, it's quick. If you have a mistake, you can redo it, uh, easily allows uh, overlap of our bone scans. And so, yeah, just, just really has changed the game on how we can prototype restorations and come up with a, a clean and easy result. And when we say digital workflows, right, uh, <laughs> there are so many touch points. And in your point of view, what, are, what is in reality the most essential steps that you would consider in the office if somebody would like to start investing now, for example? Yes. So I think, uh, as I mentioned, my favorite uh, intraoral scanning, I think that's, that's the door opener. That's the door opener. And it's almost like once you have that, you are now connected to so many other technologies. Once you have that uh, model uh, digital, that you become then uh, a bigger partner in the team approach because now you can start to overlap that data and see more diagnostically. So intraoral scanning, of course, a 3D radiograph, CBCT, things of that nature. And then now really with overlapping uh, a scan of the face or a 2D photo um, is really changing how we can view our patient mm -hmm. from a truly facially generated treatment planning standpoint. And I'll be curious, as you said, from, from the facial perspective, uh, speaking of certain scanning options and simulating, because we used to assemble all our cases in semi-adjustable articulators, right? And we see all the chewing possibilities and how this will play a role into how fast the wearing or, or certain curves should be structured. Is this reproducible as well in digital workflow? Yeah, I think now we have the ability to put everything in the digital workflow, which I didn't truly jump on board before. And now I think we're there. Uh, we absolutely can can design things in the patient's anatomy. Um, and I think what this does is it leads to another level of rehabilitation. It's not just replacement of teeth. It is truly uh, oral rehabilitation in the highest degree. And now going back to my uh, second question, when I said, what are the digital touch points? Because it can be a very broad word, right? Digital workflow. Yes. But it can start with a scan and it can lead you to 
print something prior to surgical procedures. I mean, what are the definitions and, and that that you think it's more valuable to clinicians to pay attention or all of the above again? Yes, uh, hard hard <laughs> to answer. I think I started with intraoral scanning and the uh, co-diagnostics having the 3D planning for my implant surgeries. So I think that was my first jump into digital. And now we have the ability to pre-plan the entire case before surgery, meaning that we can then acquire a scan the day of surgery and fabricate the teeth with my own printer in my little lab, in my clinic uh, the exact same day. And um, this concept of retrofitting prosthetics and things of that nature, I just, the inaccuracies with that. Um, so I, I just feel that now that we have digital, we really can give the patient what we've discussed ahead of time. So it's it's a beautiful process. And as we evolve into the definitive prosthetics, we can print new prototypes. And this is cost effective for the clinician in private practice, uh, easy for the technician to update. So I think, yeah, it becomes a really nice process throughout the whole experience um, and an easy way to take care of the patient in the future because now we have the data. We yeah. actually can see everything we did along the way as like cookie crumbs back to their initial pre-planning. So it's right. it's all there. Not a bunch of models in boxes. Exactly. We can get rid of those. <laughs> you know, interesting you say that because I had this conversation with Herman Gallucci from yes. Harvard, right? Yes. And we were discussing the role of digital technologies with uh, uh, more precise planning now we see structures in ways and dimensions and perspectives that we couldn't, I mean, I never anticipated 15 years back, I would see the way we can manage all those structures and plan better, uh, place implants more precisely, the assertiveness yes. of certain procedures. And he was saying, Christian, I hope I'm still alive to see the evidence 20 years from now to see the shift in success rates that it was driven by how more accurate and more and better planning is that we were able to do with digital technology entering implantology. Isn't that amazing? And I agree because also we can be less invasive. It's much like medicine, right? What we do now, we can see so many things ahead of time that we couldn't see before. And I think that that's the real success is we can be less invasive, yeah. more efficient, and actually have to do less procedures physically on the patient. Right. The waste part is also really important, right? You talk about having to hold on to models. We just have less physical waste as well. So I think that ultimately it just feels like I'm uh, providing dentistry in a better way. And I like how he contextualized saying, well, we get that a lot, the question if it's a trend, but 20 years from now we'll tell. Yes, absolutely. Reflected on the benefits the on the patient. The long-term results, exactly. Right? Exactly. And if we shift, well, all right, it's not a trend. You're an advocate. If I walk into your office, yes. I know there are many workflows <laughs> that we can explore from single crowns, posterior, anterior, and full arch, as we discussed previously. If I walk in right now, I just stumble and I <laughs> bang my tooth here on, <laughs> on this microphone. <laughs> what would you do to me? Yes, yes. How would be my digital path in your practice? And I think that that's a beautiful thing you highlighted. What would you do for me? And it's it's what my team can do for you because mm. that's another beautiful part about being a business owner and a clinician is I can delegate the capturing of a lot of the data. So I would bring you in and give you a nice tour of my office. Uh, we would start by acquiring some radiography and some photos. Uh, then I can do a smile cloud workup before I even meet you. So that's a beautiful thing about my team getting the photos and putting all that in smile cloud. Uh, we have the radiographs. My team would also acquire the uh, intraoral scans, and then we can align all of that so I can truly get a picture of the patient before I even shake their hand. Right. So it becomes not only is it a nice, nicer experience for me, but when I go in that room, I have everything there to communicate properly because we say it, you know, we've said it for years, a picture or a video now tells a thousand words. Yes. And so you just cannot communicate with other team members the same or with your patients the same without something physical to show them. So I would show you your scans. We would talk about things that I saw, help you understand, uh, you know, the treatment needs that you have and help show you how we can get you to a successful result. So what do you think? Are you on board? Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm halfway solved. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's assume. Yeah. I looked at everything and I, I 
And I said, yes, let's do yes. this. Yes. Okay. What's Wonderful. next? What's next? So I would take your uh, intraoral scan and align it with your CBCT and co-diagnostics. Uh, again, we would have your face aligned to design your smile if it included one or more than one teeth. And so we can pre-plan that whole case and... I don't do the surgical component myself, so we would engage the oral surgeon or the periodontist, depending on the team and our technician. So that's, again, the beautiful part about something like SmileCloud and AXS, where all the data is being shared in the same portal. So we can have a true treatment planning discussion and plan out the entire surgery before it happens. Then we could design the guides. My technician could print the guides or I can print the guides. And then same thing with our same day restoration that can be printed by my technician or myself and then give you a protective appliance to wear and off you go for appropriate healing. But uh, And then with the definitive restoration, same thing. You can just go back to that portal of data, take photos along the way, shade match things, you know, all that information that we want to say directly to all the partners involved uh, can be done through that portal in a very efficient way. I love how you just laid out at least six, seven touch points in yeah. which digital dentistry and technology is helping you be more efficient, not only more efficient, but to be more transparent in the communication with your patient yes. as well. Yes. Let's shift gear a little bit. We have this section called, it's not what we think, it's what we know. And I would like to know from you, if there was any article or case that you saw, there was like, it changed the way you think or how you do things that you think our audience should know about as well. Excellent. Yeah, I love this question. Uh, I've been practicing implant dentistry for a long time, and I've always practiced as a multidisciplinary clinician. I just love a team. I love the shared win. And uh, the article that really took that to the next level for me was uh, Florin Kofar published uh and the Journal of Aesthetic Restorative Dentistry in 2002 um, about this multidisciplinary treatment and how we can get on the same page, the same perspective is what he talks about. And he mentions how in the analog workflow, there's just no possible way to be reproducible in our techniques uh, in this exact vision of the case, where once we go digital and we align that data, we can all see that case to a deeper level and do a deeper level of planning. So again, that concept of common perspective uh, has really changed it for me. And we talked earlier about, you know, reducing that friction to communication. I think that's that hit it. It just sparked me and said, this is the way. This is how we're going to do it. So getting all of our data collected, putting it all in one place, we can speak the same language uh, and work through the case together. I love this very much, and I'm a witness of this because we had recently a few clinical validations with new uh, Strauman products, and the surgeries would take place in Brazil. So, patient was uh, assessed and was selected in Brazil. Data was captured, sent to Switzerland. Yes. We did Switzerland and in in Germany uh, a whole bunch of back and forth in communication all within the one virtual place oh, it's wonderful guides and provisionals were printed in spain oh. <laughs> and then all sent back to brazil so when i got there everything was in one place how could we have done that could, otherwise yeah we just couldn't have done that that level of expertise right i can log into a case i can send it to you and get your opinion it's just yeah that's truly changed everything for me and how i practice and speaking of, it's not what we uh, what we think; it's what we know. Speaking of knowing, <laughs> we know that we don't know everything. That's that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and we also have this one session. It's called "Experience Taught Me This." It hasn't been always sunshine and rainbows, nope. right? You must have stumbled <laughs> upon something on this path, and we have to be truthful and respectful of learning curve. Yes, in your digital technology learning curve have you stumbled upon something that that was another aha moment that you say <laughs> now i have to tell everybody about this because so they don't do the same yes yeah i think for me because i am incorporating a lot of different technologies and overlapping a lot of pieces of data i didn't quite appreciate the sequential errors that we make will add up right depending on what we use so if you choose the wrong technology for intraoral scanning and have an error of you know 100 microns or you know makeup based on the scanner and now you're aligning that 
uh, with the future product. You're going to layer on the source of errors. Uh, but also, in the beginning, I just probably didn't capture enough data. So I look back at some of my cases, uh, take a full surgical case uh, for example, for large replacement of teeth, I would maybe just capture the teeth in the scan and not necessarily get the outlying soft tissue or mm. palatal rugae and things of that nature that are really helpful to pre-plan the case and then merge that data the day of surgery. So I think just didn't capture enough data probably in the beginning. It's different than the analog world. You don't have it to hold in your hand. You have to rely on this very precise alignment. And if you don't, again, in the beginning, I experienced some cants. Uh, some midline shifting, all kinds of things uh, you can imagine. Um, but just really learning what part of each piece of equipment was going to create what error. Uh, and once you know that, just like our old analog techniques where the stone is going to change depending on how moist it is and things of that nature, we need to apply those same concepts to digital. So we're going to have errors, right? Um, it's still a piece of data, but the more we can pay attention and understand uh, how to use that um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot more fun now. And the beautiful thing about digital is if we don't do it the right way the first time, we can erase it and do it again very quickly and inexpensively. Just like pictures. Just like pictures, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> In the context, of course, it's the, it's the topic of today, right? The context of digital workflows. But we all have our little favorite things, right? Favorite movies, favorite <laughs> songs, or artists, and indications as well. I yeah. would like to know from you, Kimberly, the dentist, but also the person else that you're like, uh, yay, when that <laughs> indication comes in, is it yes. which ticks you the best? I mean, it's aesthetically challenging situation or full art situation that what takes you there yeah i you know all the dentistry that we do with implants is so challenging and exciting but i'd say yeah the full arch tooth replacement has got to be um one of the most exciting things we can do today because i don't have this worry that it's not going to come out nice the day of surgery this uh smile design smile cloud platform has given me the confidence to say, yep, I'm going to show the patient this and I can actually achieve that. And so that gets me excited, right? I'm not terrified going into this very complex thing where I'm going to take someone's teeth out. This is a big change for them. Yeah. And instead, I can rejuvenate them and rejuvenate myself and know that I'm going to have predictability with that. So yeah, yeah the Smile Design software has just really changed my life and made so much uh, fun, again, with that communication aspect. I can show the patient something that we mutually understand both the complications uh, and the exciting parts of the case and all go into it with that same uh, end in mind. I couldn't agree more with you. It's, I mean, every situation has this very rewarding element, but taking somebody who's already at the edge of a very collapsed situation, functionally, aesthetic, self-esteem, and you turn that upside down. Yeah, you change you them. You change them as a human. They're back to being their best self, both socially and, yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> Kimberly, it's really a joy to have you with us. I wish we had more time to do this, <laughs> to do much longer. I have so much, so many other items that I would like to pick your brain, uh, but sadly, we have to finish this. <laughs> to all of the clinicians out there who be interested to find you and know more about your work or educational opportunities where they can find you. Yes. So I'm on Instagram and pretty active there answering questions and helping share tips and techniques. So I do little videos in my clinic and I have my team members record those for me. So Dr. Skim on Instagram and then um, on my website, Bend Prosthodontics. I'm in Bend, Oregon. So stop by. I'd love to uh, take you to the mountain and do some skiing together. <laughs> oh, thanks, <Bentley>. Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> and to all of you out there, if this content was valuable, to you, make sure you give it a like because we need that. We need to be relevant. Make sure you also share your friends. Sharing is caring. And until the next episode, <laughs> keep digital. Keep digital. Thank Ciao. you. <laughs>